Hey, what's up guys, Jay's Two Cents, and today we're gonna do a review of a piece of wood and my terrible tan lines from cycling. Today we're gonna do something I have only done a couple of times on this channel. We are gonna take a look at a smartphone device. And it's not an Apple device, so that'll be fun. And the talking hands thing, well, if you've never seen my channel before and you've never seen my face, trust me, I am doing you a favor. But today we're gonna to take a look at ZTE's new Axon Android smartphone. They're gonna be making a big push here in the US. So today we're gonna to be talking about this phone and why this might actually be one of my favorite Android devices that I have personally ever touched. And trust me, that's saying a lot. If you ask me, this looks an awful lot like Apple. Now we'll, we'll go ahead and open up the package here and you'll see what I mean. When you open it up, you are greeted with the device. Now the Axon comes in three different colors. You've got this black with kind of a gold trim, which is what I've got. You've got silver, which is basically just like a bare aluminum anodized. And then you have got a kind of a goldish color. So again, kind of taking cues from Apple on that one, I think. But once you take it out here, we'll just kind of set that aside. Uh, you remove this tray you are met with a little fold out thing here that's got, you know, quick start guide. It's not easy to get this out. And then you've got inside charger cable, charger and earbuds or earphones. So this is why I say this is awfully a lot like Apple. I think their presentation, at least my first impressions of opening up the package here, this is, this is way too Apple. Uh, I, I would have liked to have seen something a little bit more unique because this, let's face it, the reason why I'm doing this review is Axon brings something kind of unique and, and, and different, that's not your mainstream brand, which is why I'm excited about this product. Uh, but anyway, the headphones, they are JBL. So these are gonna be a nice high quality uh, earbud. I don't wanna even call them earbuds, that's an Apple thing. Earphone, in-ear earphone, uh, that's gonna meet the sound quality that a lot of the customers you know, have desired. I also would have liked to have seen a black charging cable and a black brick with black headphones because that's more Android to me. I, I, I don't. I know I've said this like 15 times already, but my first impressions when I opened this package up and started messing with it was, is this an Apple product or what? Let's go ahead and run through the specs real quick of the physical aspects of the phone. It is a 5.5 inch screen uh, compared to the iPhone 6. You can see it does look pretty big, but the display is not actually edge to edge, which is gonna be good. So if you are gonna be putting a case on this thing, it's not gonna be covered up at all by any of the case. Uh, it does weigh 6.10 ounces or 6.10 ounces. Uh, or 175 grams. So it's not the lightest phone there's ever been, but because of the all metal construction, uh, I do think that that's an, a reasonable weight. In fact, it's kind of weighty, which is, in my opinion, I like to have a phone that's got a little bit of weight to it. Uh, it does measure 9.3 millimeters thick. So it is thicker than say an iPhone 6 or some of the other Android devices, but that's because it's got this sort of a curve to it. And because it's got a curve, it's got a thicker point in the middle. So that 9.3 millimeters is measured right here in the center or the highest point of the phone. Uh, but other than that, it is a uh, really solid feeling phone. Because it's curved though, it does feel a little bit slippery in my opinion, uh, because there's no edge really on the back to, to kind of put your hand against. So you do want to be careful if you're not running with a case that uh, you don't drop this thing. It is very slick because of the aluminum uh, case. But uh, other than that, it is not user serviceable. You cannot pop this back cover off. You cannot replace the battery. You cannot replace the storage. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, one thing I think is really, really nice about this device, and I've always complained about this, especially with Apple, is putting the speaker on the bottom of the device never made sense because when you're holding it, let's say like this, you're gonna block it with your hands, or it's just the sound is going away from you. You want the sound coming towards you. So ZTE has put the actual speakers right here inside this really attractive looking mesh grill. And then on the top here, you have a matching mesh grill, but the speakers are down here as well as the microphone pickup. So it, it's facing you. Imagine that. Sound that faces you. God, who would have thought? Moving on to the front of the device, you've got a really beautiful TFT display, as I mentioned, 534 pixels per inch. It's very, very sharp. Uh, it's very smooth. And it is not an edge to edge screen, which is nice because when you put a case on this thing, you're not gonna have it wrapping over the screen at all, making some of the edges harder to touch. 
You do have a front facing camera on here, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, later in this video. And then you do have a dedicated home button. Flanking the home button on either side, you've got two little dots. The left dot is a back button. So let's say you're you know, in something, whatever you hit that dot, you're gonna go back to the previous screen. And then on the right, it brings up a programmable key, but it's also brings up task manager, which you can clear all right from there. So it's nice and quick to actually enable those functions. Now scrolling on this is very, very quick and snappy. And that's because in terms of hardware specs on this, it's almost a little bit ridiculous. This is using a Snapdragon 810, which is an eight core, 2000 megahertz processor. That's probably faster than some people's desktops. And on top of that, it's got four gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> this thing is an absolute monster in terms of just responsiveness. Now, keeping this thing alive is a 3000 milliamp battery, which uh, is advertising 12 hours of talk time and 10 days or 240 hours of standby time. Uh, and it is not user replaceable. I just want to point out this back panel does not come off. This is one of those Android devices here that's not serviceable. You can't get inside. You can't expand the memory. You cannot do anything to the device. It's almost locked down hardware wise, uh, kind of like an iPhone where you cannot expand the memory. So that's kind of a downside number one. Android always being user friendly in terms of adding more memory and such, you can't, or, or storage, you can't do that in this case. But this one does come with 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, so that should be more than enough for most people. You're just not gonna be able to put a ton of movies and stuff on here. You can put tons of pictures, tons of uh, applications, and tons of music, uh, but I wouldn't go putting a ton of movies on here because 32 gigs will fill up fast. It would be nice to see a 64 gig or maybe even a 128 gig variant, uh, but anyway, that's what's available on this model right here. Now ZTE is claiming that this is the first true hi-fi sound device in the US. It's got two dedicated audio chipsets in there. It's got an analog to digital converter or an ADC for improved recording and digital to analog converter for better playback. So this thing does have a built-in sound recorder that you could hook up a high quality uh, microphone to this or use the built-in microphone, which is gonna sound decent as well. And it's got a DAC built into this to give you superior playback. Uh, especially when you use high fidelity headphones, kind of like the JBLs that were actually included with this, uh, but it's gonna sound fantastic. But the built-in speakers on this thing are also probably amongst the best I've ever heard. Now, because they do have all of this space right here to put a nice massive, uh, well, I guess massive compared to the device, high fidelity speaker in here, uh, the playback on this thing is actually very, very good. Now I'm gonna play a little bit right here, a little bit of this music. You're not going to be able to hear how good it sounds, trust me. I just want to play this back so you guys can at least hear the volume level of this thing is actually pretty impressive. So the sound quality of the speakers is fantastic. And as I mentioned, when you're holding it, guess what? They face you. All right. Now we're not going to talk a whole lot about the operating system on this. You can look up pretty much any Android 5.1 uh, you know, review and you'll, you'll get a really good idea of how this works. But it's very lightweight. They, they're not sticking a bunch of crap on here that you don't care about and that you don't want, uh, but they do offer you a couple of extra launchers on here as well if you want to do that. You can scroll up and you can see, you know, things that are going on for the day, et cetera, et cetera. I'm still kind of sucky in Android. Uh, you can see I have done 10 steps today. Obviously, I've not been carrying this phone around very often. No, that's all right. I haven't left my chair. Don't judge me. Now, one of the other phones out there that's really kind of made a splash in the Android uh, community with it not being a mainstream like flagship device from Samsung or Motorola or you know HTC was the OnePlus One. But most people had nothing but terrible things to say about the camera. Well, the camera in this guy here is a 13 megapixel camera. In fact, uh, it's even got 4K recording capability at 30 FPS built in. But it's got a ton of different modes. Now we'll go ahead and flip this around. Now you guys can see me. You see how pretty I am? Do you see my pretty face? So the front facing camera on here has got face re facial recognition. It's also not the sharpest camera in the world for front facing, but I think it gets the job done. Now when you flip it around, you've got 13 megapixels to play with on the dual camera setup. And both of these cameras here are actually, they're not the same. You've got two different apertures also happening between both of these camera uh, cameras, which are gonna give you some very near DSLR type of uh, performance now. I'm not gonna call it DSLR performance. A lot of people are quick to say that, 
you're never gonna get DSLR performance out of something like this size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that now. But they do give you all of these different modes here. You've got full manual mode, multi-exposure mode where you can take two pictures and kind of overlay them on top of each other. Panorama Sport, which is a very fast uh, shutter speed with a very fast focus, slow motion, and interval. Interval is kind of neat. It's kind of like a time lapse. You can play around with that a little bit. You've got auto mode, and you've also got uh, bokeh mode. Now bokeh is, uh, or bokeh, however you want to say it, is basically like depth of field. It is where you can make things that are farther away blurrier because you can play with the f-stop on this particular camera. Now anything below f2.0 is going to be nothing but a software uh, manipulation of the photo. It's not a true f1.0 in this, trust me. But you can play around with this where um, you can take a photo here and touch what you want to focus on. It'll beep at you when it gets the focus. Take the photo. And then it actually adds more bokeh post-production which uh, as you can see right there, the Axon is in perfect focus, but then everything else is, is super blurry. Now it wasn't actually that blurry when it took the photo, uh, but it did a process, a post-processing to it, which added a little bit to it. So it's not a true you know, depth of field or f-stop that, that you're playing around with, anything below 2.0 anyways, uh, but, and I just bumped the shutter button. But anyway, it does give you a little bit of creativity to play around with. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, camera does do 4K recording at 30 FPS. We'll put up a couple of samples of that probably somewhere around now. But I will say the camera on this thing is pretty damn good. You can see the detail on the flower is super sharp. Uh, it really likes to do macro photography. In fact, this camera is fantastic at doing macro stuff. Uh, I even pointed it directly at the sun just to see how the sensor could handle that. It did a fantastic job of giving me almost like a dual exposure where even though it was pointed directly at the sun, you could still see the palm tree. Uh, it's not in super detail, it's quite a bit shadowed, uh, but you got an image that gave you something than just a big sun flare in the middle of the screen. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do with this is I wanna do a little bit of a gaming demo on this. That eight core Snapdragon processor is, uh, <laughs> this is, this might as well just be like a PSP or a full on gaming device because that processor and that four gigs of RAM is just, absolutely overkill for a device like this. So I just thought I'd do a couple seconds here of Angry Birds uh, 2. In fact, it's so loud I gotta turn it down. Man, I told you those speakers are loud. Uh, but we'll just do a few seconds of this. Angry Birds isn't exactly a very demanding game. Uh, let's do this. Oh yeah. But as you can see, there's no stutters or anything. It's very, very smooth. The graphics processor on this is really good. Dang, I gotta turn down farther. This speakers are so loud. What are you doing? Get back here. And... Eh. Oh, fail. All right, whoa, that's a... Um, nailed it. All right, I totally meant to do that. All right. But as you can see, the gameplay on this is super smooth. Although the driver really sucks, that's for sure. And we're going super fast. And I finished first. Oh yeah. All right, well gaming on this thing, as you can see, is pretty amazing. I'm happy with it. So here in the US right now, it currently works on AT&T, T-Mobile, MPCS, Cricket, Rogers, Bell, Tel and TELUS. Uh, if you happen to be in Europe or Asia, it's gonna work on most uh, Europe, Asia, Oceania, Latin America country areas where GSM and WCDMA network roaming uh, is actually working. So I can't use this on Verizon, unfortunately. That's kind of a downside, uh, but it is unlocked and you do buy it carrier free. Uh, you buy it directly from ZTE, so you're not going to have to deal with contracts or any of that stuff. And then a price of $450, the features that you get for $450, uh, I think it's great because you start dealing with phones like Samsung and iPhone and all of that. And to buy them carrier or contract free, they could be like $700 or something stupid. So there you go, guys. The Axon from ZTE. I think this is a super, super sharp device. I really like the way that it looks. I like the way that it performs. I, I don't like the way it doesn't work on Verizon. 
All right, so what device are you guys using? Sound off down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter and let me know. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Maybe we'll do more of these uh, mobile content type videos. This was kind of fun. I'm a little bit out of my element, but I, I do carry a smartphone, so I do feel like I've got some opinion on the matter. All right, guys, time to get out of here, and we'll see you. Where are you? Where are you at? There you are. We'll see you in the next one.